Hi there, welcome to the first episode of my 10 minute moan of today. And the topic of this 10 minute moan is a murderer from Uganda who, <clears throat> they are saying, will not be deported upon his release because it could affect his mental health. I know you probably struggle processing what I've just said to you, but it is indeed true. And the story is covered in today's Daily Mail with the headline, Ugandan killer jailed for life for brutally murdering a man in the back of an ambulance won't be deported after judge rules it would breach his human rights. So, yeah, you heard that right as well. Murdering a man in the back of an ambulance. A Ugandan killer who was jailed for life after brutally murdering a man in the back of an ambulance will not be deported after judge ruled it would be a breach of his human rights. The man known only as ZM, as he was granted anonymity. Oh, my word. Was a member <clears throat> of a North London gang who chased her victim, Eugene Brianna, into the back of an ambulance wielding baseball bats and clubs, golf clubs, and clubbed him to death. ZM, who was 18 at the time of the murder, is now 37. He was jailed for life in 2006 with the judge ordering that he should serve a minimum of 16 years. Now the minimum of 16 years is obviously up now. He's served 18 years, which is probably why people are considering what to do with him should he be released, because he's been able to potentially be released two years ago. The Home Office sought to have him deported to Uganda on his release form, but were blocked by a first-tier immigration judge. ZM's lawyers successfully argued that it would be inhumane to deport him to Uganda because the country does not have the facilities required to treat his mental health conditions. The court was told that the killer had a psychiatric disorder which caused him to suffer a pervasive distrust and suspiciousness which made him preoccupied with grievance and grudges against those who believed it harmed him. Lawyers argued that being deported to Uganda would be a traumatic event that could cause his mental condition to deteriorate and that living in an alien world, this alien world being where he comes from, in Uganda with no friends and separated from his mother who lives in the UK would add to his suspiciousness. The court accepted that there would be a serious, rapid and irreversible decline in his mental health if he were to be deported and that this would be a breach of Article 3 under the European Convention of Human Rights, which protects individuals against inhumane and degrading treatment or torture. Now, this is a problem I've got with the European Convention of Human Rights. It's outdated. And the reason it's outdated is when it came into law, it was probably not a bad bit of legislation. But like most legislations through time, they slightly change because people challenge them, people interpret them, and once something's interpreted once in a court of law, then precedence is set. So somebody at some point decided that this thing was probably written to stop people going home to places that maybe get tortured, right? That we can now use it to stop sending people back to Uganda who have murdered people in the back of ambulances because they've got this wee health condition that means they distrust people. Not my problem. I, I'm, I'm really struggling to understand where this is a British public's problem because if this man is not deported after release, he then goes on to the streets in Britain. And I'm not sure where we draw the line between the safety of the British citizens and a guy who doesn't want to go home because he might not get looked after enough because he's got some peculiar, if at all, um, health, um, mental health problem. Anyway, Christopher John Hansen, the senior immigration judge, said he was satisfied that the necessary treatment of ZM's condition was either not available or not accessible to him in Uganda. He said, I find that if ZM was remo removed to Uganda, there would be a serious, serious, rapid and irreversible decline in their state of health, resulting in intense suffering or significant reduction in his life expectancy. 
All of those factors led me to conclude that there is a real risk of ill treatment capable of breaching ZM's Article 3 rights in the context of reception procedures in Uganda. Rejecting the Home Office appeal, Judge Hansen said that the first tier judge has not been shown to have materially erred in law, which would mean that ZM would be allowed to stay in the UK. ZM's battle a legal battle against his deportation is one of 27,000 appeals currently been waiting to be heard before the courts. The backlog as of March this year shows that in appeals have nearly quadrupled since March 2023, when there was just 7,500. The Refugee Council has predicted that appeals are expected to increase sharply, many of which will be challenging their deportation on human rights. Grounds. I'm kind of lost with this. I, 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 if ever there was a need to bin the European Charter for Human Rights or whatever bloody stupid name it's got, it's now. Because this one story shows it up that it's useless. Because a country's main aim is to protect it's citizens. So this guy who's got mental health problems and clubbed somebody to death in the back of an ambulance, if he comes out of jail anytime soon, he's getting released to the streets of the UK when he should be released to home office who would put him back in the streets of Uganda because he's like a Ugandan citizen. So therefore, he's kind of their problem, not ours. And it just beggars belief that we still... Although we're not part of the European Union anymore, we're still subject to some of their rules and regulations. And this one, we're not saying that nobody should have human rights because that's the argument put up when anybody suggests doing away and coming out of, opting out of the European uh, Charter for Human Rights. So, yeah, people need human rights. Of course they do. But can I have some that have been written recently and not ones that are outdated and being abused? Because this is an abuse of human rights. My human rights as a, as a British citizen. And I want to remind people what I said on the streets of Glasgow a week and a half ago. This here gives me the right as a UK citizen to have the expectation that my country should look after my rights and put them above all others. And I would suggest that the vast majority of people who own one of these or even entitled to one of these, would have the same concerns as I have about a Ugandan um, not being deported when he's time served for this ridiculous, old and outdated piece of legislation. The European Convention on Human Rights was drafted in 1950. That's 74 years ago. And entered force in 1953. Now, <laughs> if that is still accurate for today and, 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 and suitable for today's use, then I'm kind of shocked and surprised. So we need out of this. We do need to have human rights. That's that's you know normal uh, expectation, but no, this one, because this is protecting people who should not be in our country. I think as soon as you've found guilty of any crime, you know, if you want to put a list of them and allow you know have a, a, a line where anything above that, you get deported, then fine. I would just say any crime, as soon as you break the laws of the United Kingdom, if you're not a UK subject, you get taken back to your own country. We've got 11,000 foreign prisoners in our jails currently and we've got an overcrowding problem where's the common sense there is none so do the right thing United Kingdom um, vote people in that will um, take us out of the European Convention of Human Rights draft our own legislation which we would be in full control of and um, start looking after the safety and putting first the safety 
people who have or are entitled to one of these. I'd vote for you. If you enjoyed the content in this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please consider subscribing and hitting the notifications button. Um, put your comments below, please, in the comments section. Let me know what you think of this topic and the video. But most importantly of all, unless you're a Ugandan that's over here clubbing people to death in the back of an ambulance, or this industry of human rights lawyers who protect these people, not you, but... Everyone else, have a great day. Cheerio bye now.